Greetings to all fans of good movies. In this video, I will tell you about a romantic comedy called Career Opportunities. Why don't we get underneath the bench? Do you want to get on top? The film begins with the confident speech of the main character. He speaks before an audience of dogs who listen to him attentively. Soon the owner of a veterinary clinic enters the room and literally throws the guy out the door. Don't you ever come back! Listen to the dogs, Subi. They love me! Next, our character performs in front of neighborhood boys and then tells stories at a roadside cafe. In the small town, everyone knows Jimmy and what a slacker and dreamer he is. Later, Guy asks the gas station owner for a job but gets rejected. The man advises Jim to move to another town where nobody knows him and where he could start fresh. Seeing an attractive girl at the gas station, Jimmy immediately tries to impress her. The beauty notices and smiles. Suddenly, someone pulls Jimmy's arm. It turns out it was his father, who found out that his son lost job at the veterinary clinic. As usual, Jim makes excuses, but the father doesn't believe him. Later, during a family dinner, we learn that our character has been fired from his job 20 times already, and no one in the family supports him except his mother. You got fired. There's gotta be some kind of record. In the morning, father drives Jimmy to another job interview and threatens to kick him out of the house if he doesn't get the job. At the interview, there's a mix-up, and they mistake Jim for someone else, offering him a position as a store manager. Our character understands this and even manages to negotiate a higher salary by several thousand dollars. Then the phone rings. From the phone call, it becomes clear that there was a mistake. They are only willing to offer Jimmy a position as a night cleaner boy with a salary of $4.44 per hour. I'll take it. Welcome to the target team. Thank you. Meanwhile, in the mansion of a local businessman, a meeting with representatives of the governor is taking place. Later, the girl we saw at the gas station appears in the room. Josie is the daughter of this businessman. She has a difficult relationship with her father and tries to annoy him with her behavior. I don't want to interrupt your meeting. Bye. After the failed negotiations, the angry father enters his daughter's room and threatens to beat her for disobedience. The next evening, Jimmy rents a limousine to celebrate his first night of work at his new job. On the way, he encounters the boys to whom once again he tells tales of his rich life and the beautiful girls he supposedly dates. Jim is so cool. Jim arrives at the Target store shortly before closing time, and all the customers are invited to go to the cash registers. We see that Josie is also in the store and is in no hurry to return home. After closing, the intern is given the uniform of the previous janitor, and the cleaning plan is explained to him in a strict manner. During the conversation, he learns that he will be alone at the workplace all night, locked inside and unable to leave the store until morning. You're locking me in? Nobody gets a set of keys on their first night. Now get to work! Jimmy starts cleaning. Reluctantly, he manages to tidy up the aisles, after which he decides to take a break. The guy entertains himself without reservation, taking things and food directly from the store shelves. Soon, he completely forgets about his duties and turns the store into his own amusement park. Rollerblading between the shelves, he notices an attractive girl who is watching him attentively. Are you alright? The two engage in an awkward conversation, during which Jimmy learns how Josie ended up in the closed supermarket. She can't stand her tyrant father and decided to spend the night in the empty store. After hearing her story, Jimmy quickly comes to his senses and starts taking care of the unexpected guest. He treats her to dinner using products and food from the store shelves. Over dinner, he talks non-stop, telling her about himself and his family, while the girl listens attentively and smiles sweetly. During this time, a pair of criminals arrives in the town who had earlier robbed a person and stolen his car during the day. Also, Josie's father, accompanied by the sheriff, starts searching for his missing daughter. Shouldn't you be cleaning up the store? I got plenty of time. After dinner, the two sit in garden chairs, and Josie tells Jim that all the people call him the town liar. These words offend Jimmy, and as usual, he starts defending himself. He asks, does Josie think of him as a liar like everyone else? 
to which the girl replies that she doesn't know him too well, despite the fact that they previously used to go to the same school. The conversation turns into a heart-to-heart -heart talk, where they share their problems and argue about who has a harder time living in this town. Jimmy continues with his activities, but Josie follows him and makes him admit that he's just an ordinary liar who's afraid of growing up. After admitting this, Jim tells the girl that all her problems are due to her bad relationship with her father, and that all she has to do is measure herself against him. Later in the conversation, they decide to move to Los Angeles together, forget the past, and start anew. We have to get a car. Let, let's get through the night first. The passing nearby robbers notice the bright store sign and stop. Josie confesses to Jim that she has a large sum of money in her purse, which is enough for them to move. She also asks how she can make up for causing offense, and Jimmy asks her for just one dance that never happened between them back in school. The beauty is surprised by this response. She expected to hear something completely different. First things first. During the dance, the two grow even closer and finally kiss. Suddenly there is a knock. Jim approaches the glass door and sees the local sheriff knocking, searching for the missing girl. He noticed a glowing signboard and decided to check what was going on. Jimmy explains that he's alone in the store and can't let the police officer in because he wasn't given any keys. He's locked outside until morning. After getting the explanation, the sheriff returns to his car feeling he's done his duty. Meanwhile, the two continue goofing around, happily rollerblading between the store aisles. Their fun is interrupted by the arrival of the robbers who somehow manage to enter the store. In a panic, they crash into the robbers and take advantage of the confusion to hide in the fitting rooms of the shopping center. However, one of the robbers manages to find the fugitives. Holding them down and pointing their guns, the bandits start interrogating them. Thinking quickly, Jimmy tries to deceive them, claiming he's involved in a huge criminal deal for a massive sum of money. He portrays the girl as his hostage, and they would be better off leaving the store quickly to avoid trouble. When the situation escalates, Jimmy grabs a radio and pretends to communicate with accomplices who are about to storm the store. He manages to disarm the robbers, but they reveal that their guns aren't loaded, and Jimmy tries to resolve the conflict peacefully. I'll throw in a couple of corn dogs, and we'll all get to know each other, hmm? The bandits take control of the situation, and that's when Josie comes up with her own rescue plan. She suggests to the robbers to quickly rob the store and take her as a partner. The robbers agree and start looting the shelves almost indiscriminately. Jimmy is left with no choice but to watch. Unable to bear it, he tries to stop the robbery, but Josie convinces him not to intervene, and Jim relents. During the loading of goods into the car, the bandits get distracted. Josie manages to sneak into the driver's seat and drive away with all the stolen items. Meanwhile, Jim enters the security room and grabs a gun. He decides not to be afraid anymore and confronts the robbers. Through the loudspeaker, Jim lures the bandits and successfully neutralizes them. Attention target shoppers. By morning, Josie returns to the store for her beloved and the arriving police officer finds the tied-up thieves sitting in the middle of the store. As our character leave town, he gets to boast once again to the familiar boys, but this time about a real girl he's with. He is so cool. Sometime later, the two sit by the pool overlooking the Hollywood Hills, enjoying their free and independent life. Thanks to everyone who watched until the end. Share your opinion about the film below in the comments.